In healthcare, sex and gender-based disparities contribute to differences in health outcomes. In this study, we are looking at a time to diagnosis disparity, specifically with problems associated with the lag time to diagnosis for particular demographics. We were interested in answering two primary research questions. First, can we systematically quantify time to diagnosis gender disparities across phenotypes? And second, can we analyze the impact of these disparities on the diagnostic process? To investigate these questions, we present two large-scale complementary analyses conducted on 121 phenotypes using Columbia University Medical Center's records. In our first analysis, we assess the time to diagnosis disparities across genders. For each phenotype, we computed the mean time interval of a condition's occurrence until diagnosis, which we averaged across all patients. We examined this disparity for time to diagnosis for each condition, as described in Figure 1 in Column 1. Analyzing the same presenting symptom across genders, we find that women were diagnosed approximately 11.58 days later than men on average per phenotype, despite presenting with the exact same presenting symptom. In 59% of all conditions for patients that go on to develop the same phenotype, women were diagnosed later than men with the same symptom. Using Crohn's disease as an example, given the same symptom presentation, women were diagnosed with an overall time to diagnosis disparity of 19.54 days. In our second analysis, we assess the diagnostic fairness across time. For each phenotype, we train a gender agnostic classifier that diagnoses patients based on three years of clinical observations. At test time, we're interested in how fairness gaps in diagnosis change across time. By increasing the test set's time window with decreasing right censoring, we mimic the diagnostic process of a doctor seeing increasing amounts of data in the test set. And in doing so, we can quantify the fairness gaps across time steps. We can aggregate these fairness gaps using our metric of mean squared discrimination, which we've shown in figure four across all phenotypes, with blue indicating a male bias and red indicating a female bias. Distances further from the center axis indicate larger magnitudes of bias as measured by the mean squared error of the fairness gaps. For results, we find that despite our earlier findings where women present with symptoms earlier than men, for the majority of classifiers, the classifiers have a male favored recall bias, meaning they perform better for men. In figure six, we show that the recall gaps for Crohn's patients, for example, are consistently men favored across all time steps, despite our earlier finding where women present with Crohn's symptoms earlier than men. In conclusion, our two analyses present counterintuitive results. A further investigation to why this trend persists is needed to understand how different genders experience the diagnostic process differently. While our analysis is limited to a single clinical site, because we operate in the Odyssey framework, our methodology is easily extensible to other Odyssey sites and may be applied to other validated disease phenotypes.